Welcome back to the lab, Sony. Getting our first look at the Xperia XZ and we're already happy to see a few improvements over the last Xperia we reviewed. General reactions to the X performance were pretty underwhelming and the XZ looks to address several of our complaints. We're not doing the full unboxing thing here as this wasn't really a sealed unit when it arrived, it didn't have a charger in the box, but we do have some early thoughts to share. First of all, we're digging the subtle design touches and updates, wrapping edges and rounding off corners. This is still a monolithic slab look, but it feels like a fresh take on what we've seen from previous Sonys. It's repetitive to say, but we really do enjoy Sony engineering. These phones are sharp, clean, modern, and professional. The XZ continues to reinforce that opinion on first glance. This gadget feels better pieced together than the X performance it replaces, our review unit which had issues around the SIM card tray. None of the trim on this device is separating from the main phone body. But we're not sure what this panel is for, perhaps additional clearance for radio reception. It feels a little different than the rest of the phone back. Maybe we should invest in some of those fancy picks for scratch tests. Nah, probably not. The tech specs are well-worn Xperia territory. The screen size increases over the X performance, now a 5.2 inch diagonal, but the resolution stays the same at 1080p. We've got a Qualcomm 820 on tap with three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, the whole affair powered by a 2,900 milliamp hour battery. Stereo speakers bookend the front face with a 13 megapixel camera for selfies up top. The rear of the phone holds a 23 megapixel shooter with a new combo of sensors, which we talked about after this phone was announced out at IFA this year. The right side of the phone holds the usual Xperia layout, power button, a lower mounted volume rocker, and a dedicated camera button. All phones should have dedicated camera buttons. The headphone jacks up top and new for this product line, a USB-C port on the bottom of the phone, ooh la la. The setup was fast enough, first boot was quick, Wi-Fi scanning was blissfully fast, and we only got nagged by one screen to sign up for Sony services, well done there. Once we're delivered to the home screens, we're happy to see the default wallpaper isn't that fuchsia mess that previous X phones have featured. This is a much more calming blue wallpaper. A performance update greeted us after the setup and we're off and running. This software also very familiar for folks who have used a recent Sony phone. There are lots of little areas for search, like in the app drawer or swiping down on a home screen. Even for Sony's additions, navigation through notifications and settings is familiar, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of bloat pre-installed. Some value-added software like AVG, Spotify, and Amazon, but nothing too egregious eating up your storage. And that's about where we should leave this hands-on. But these first impressions are always so dull. We've spent less than 20 hours with the phone. So there's not a lot of info or experiences to share yet. Instead, let's play a little game. I'm going to make some predictions about this phone given what we know about Sony phones we've reviewed in the past. And we'll see how right I was during the full review. First, two hardware issues are going to really bug me. One, this phone does not have a fingerprint sensor. This is an obnoxious omission for how many people have gotten used to unlocking their phones with fingerprint sensors. And two, Sony phones are still super aggressive about rebooting once the SIM card tray is pulled. A mild annoyance for most, but there are plenty of times that I will need to swap a memory card. I'm guessing this will be a phenomenally good camera sensor, but I'm worried this camera app will get in the way of great hardware. Likewise for audio, these speakers will compare well against many stereo speaker phones, but I'm guessing the headphone jack will probably land somewhere in Galaxy S7 territory. Lastly, I expect battery life will probably fall slightly behind the Galaxy S7 given the difference in battery capacity and display technology, but any improvement over the X performance will be a welcome upgrade. So there you have it folks, my predictions for the Xperia XZ. Drop me a comment down below with what penalties I should face if I get most of these wrong. If you come up with something really creative, maybe we'll use it for the full review. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like these and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next video.